So this morning I got an email from a student who just watched Interstellar and she wanted to ask, you know, what did I think of the movie? Was it, was it accurate? Uh, was it realistic in any, in any sort of way? So, and are there any other movies that are kind of like it? Um, and I have to say that Interstellar is absolutely one of my all time favorite movies. I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan. Um, would recommend like all of his movies, but uh, from an astronomy point of view, I especially, and from a storytelling point of view, I especially love the movie Interstellar. Um, if you haven't seen it, I super highly recommend it. I'm going to not spoil things for you, hopefully, but I want to just uh, remind you of kind of the story arc or tell you about the story arc and show you some of like the amazing science that's in it and, uh, and give you a sense of how realistic that science really is. So the basic premise of this movie, right, Interstellar, is that, uh, you know, the, the Earth is not doing so well. Our good old pal Cooper, Matthew McConaughey, um, is asked, you know, he's, he's like, I'm going from memory here, but he like worked with NASA in the past and now he's a farmer because what the Earth needs more than anything is food and they're having a hard time keeping up with the food that the Earth needs. And years and years ago, astronauts were sent on a one-way mission to space, deep space, to look for other planets, potentially other planets that could uh, humans could survive on, so other Earth-like planets. And Cooper's tasked with going out and trying to uh, save one of those astronauts and, and in the process find this planet that humans could potentially be sent to. So um, he goes out and it's awesome and he goes with his team of, of people and we see these other planets, some of these other planets, including like an ice planet, right? And we see another planet that's like a water planet. And, uh, but not, not like the whole planet is covered in water, but it's only like two feet deep. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it's, that's one of the things I love about the movie Interstellar is that it actually challenges some of our kind of like uh, assumptions about the universe and how we imagine other planets to be. One of the other things I love about it is like, this is like the robot assistant called TARS, I think, in the movie. Uh, here's another picture of them on the water planet with this, this robot that like walks around and talks and helps them. And again, it kind of challenges our assumptions about how robots are built and how robots would interact with people. Super cool to watch how this thing moves and runs and carries things. And, and in so many ways, it's like a mind, mind bending movie. Um, <clears throat> of course, there's plenty of drama and it's a threat whether these people can even return. And they're confronted with a black hole. And this black hole plays a central role in the movie. And, um, and when you see the black hole, so this is the black hole in their, in their spaceship, it's amazing to see. Uh, and what's particularly amazing is you, you, you know, time is played with around a black hole. And this is something you may have an intuition for, you may have heard about before that, you know, time kind of gets warped and bent and slowed down and sped up and weird things can happen around black holes. So what I want to just highlight for you is how realistic this science really is. Um, so this is actually a web page from NASA 2019. Interstellar came out in 2014, which is showing a simulation of what a black hole would actually look like. Um, and I hope you notice the similarities between the two. And that's not a coincidence um, because the makers of the film Interstellar actually did new science and publish their work in, in simulating how this black hole would actually appear. So this is actually the article, it's called um, Gravitational Lensing by Spinning Black Holes in Astrophysics and in the movie Interstellar. I mean, how sweet is that? This came out after the movie came out. But the people who worked on this uh, film were actually the, I'm sorry, the people who worked on this paper were actually people who worked on the film, who created the software that simulated the appearance of the black hole. And you see here as well is Kip Thorne. Kip Thorne was the science advisor. He's a Nobel Prize winning physicist from the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, which is like top university in, in, in science and technology. And he was the science advisor on this film from start to finish. Really, you know, you think of science advisors a lot of times in movies are people who just are like, oh, you're using this word wrong, or you really like you should use this equation instead of this one. Um, but Kip Thorne was involved in the making of this movie from extremely early on. In fact, we can actually see that in an interview from Scientific American, which is another um, you know trustworthy source, and their blog where back in 2014, this guy Lee Billings had written a review of 
of Interstellar. And he's like, oh, it's a great movie, tremendous acting. I love the story, but you know, the science is just way too out there. And uh, Kip Thorne saw the article and actually reached out and was like, you're wrong, dude. The science is actually pretty good in this movie. And I think this is a really telling quote. So the blog writer says, you know, I want to begin by saying how much I enjoyed your book. And what he's referring to is actually a book that Kip Thorne wrote as the movie came out called The Science of Interstellar, where he takes a deep dive in all the different science elements that are baked into the movie and parts that are accurate and kind of tells the story of how science was integral to the telling of this particular movie. So he's saying, I really enjoyed your book. It's given me a deeper appreciation of just how much work went into legitimizing the plot of the film. And Kip Thorne actually takes issue with that right off the bat. He says, let me just say as we start that I was doing a lot more than simply justifying the science in the film. He says the story was built from the ground up on the science to a very great extent through brainstorming sessions I had with the Nolan brothers. There weren't a great many times where I had to go in and explain things after the fact. And if you know Christopher Nolan movies, you know he, he kind of maps out really complex stories um, from the get-go. And so this paints a picture of how um, Kip Thorne was involved in those early brainstorming. And, and you see that when you watch the movie, how it's really integrated into the plot of the story itself, the, the science that's, that's going on here. So I think it's super cool. And um, perhaps the coolest thing from my vantage point is because th this is an element of science that is not often discussed in pop culture. You do see examples of this, like a wrinkle in time. Um, there, are other, there are a few other examples where you see people talking about higher dimensions. And it's very much a part of the physics and astronomy of black holes, warped space time. Um, it's complex physics. Most people don't. I mean, even as an undergrad, I majored in physics and astronomy. I got my master's in astronomy. I never took a course in these topics. They're so advanced. But um, Cooper has this experience where, you know, in interacting with the black hole, he enters into higher dimensions. And those are visualized in a really interesting way in what's called the Tesseract. And um, you, it's actually incredible how they actually made the scene. They actually built like a set where it was this like blurred lines to make it look like you're in this hyperdimensional space. And some people have made like diagrams to try to illustrate in the movie what is this representing, but we're talking about is a higher dimensional space where you have like, I mean, I, I, we can't even get into it right now, but it had, its basis is definitely in mathematics and in physics. And I, again, I can't recommend it enough to see the movie because it's, it integrates right into the story in a really beautiful, amazing way. So the short story here is that Interstellar is not only just an amazing movie and amazing storytelling, but it actually took the science incredibly seriously. And it's like, even for someone with a deep knowledge of this stuff, for me, it was eye opening to think about different types of planets I'd never considered before, different types of uh, technology and robots. And then, and then like the reality of what would it look like to enter into a higher dimensional space? And I mean, it's amazing. I can't recommend it enough. Um, thank you to the student who reached out to say uh, that she enjoyed it and asked if there are other movies she enjoyed. It. You know, I love it. Send me emails like that. Tell me something that you saw, something that you think is cool, something you're wondering about. I love to make a video like this to kind of dig into it a little bit with you guys. All right. I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you later.